friends. Ollie's growing like a weed. Say hello, Ollie. Say hello. All right, go play. He's being rambunctious. But I needed to do another video because I've got all these videos I need to do. I wrote in my notebook and I'm just having a beautiful afternoon and nobody's mowing or cutting trees down or whatever. So I thought I'd get out here and uh, get another one done. This is a story about an orb that I saw and came in contact with that had some very strange um, occurrences with it. Back in 2009, I was running for a company called uh, Covenant Transport, and I had a team driver with me, a guy named PMAC. It was short for his part of his first name and his last name, but um, it was around three o'clock in the morning or so, and um, Pemac was in the sleeper berth sleeping, and I didn't have but maybe hour and a half or so left on you know my shift of driving, and we were on I-80 a couple hours outside of Cheyenne, Wyoming. And um, I'm driving along, I'm speed limit up there's 75, and um, I'm zooming along, driving early morning hours, beautiful sky, it, it was stars everywhere. Um, it was cold. I think it happened in like February, something like that. But it, there wasn't snow everywhere, um, but it was very cold. But anyway, I'm driving along and there was no traffic coming or going for miles and miles and miles at that hour of the morning. And we had a load that we were supposed to drop sometime the next morning in Cheyenne. And, um, I pass, I'm zooming down the interstate, headed westbound, and there's this orange light on the side of the interstate. And I see it, because it's clearly, you know, dark outside, and my headlight's shining down the road, it, you know, it's stars in the, you know, this, the heavens, uh, looking out the windshield. And I pass this orb, sitting on the side of the road, it was glowing orange colored. And I, I watched it as I zoomed past it and I kept on going. And then within a few seconds, this thing caught up with me and was hovering outside the passenger side window of the semi. And it's keeping up with me. And this thing was about maybe a foot around. When I passed it on the side of the interstate, it looked more like it was like three or four feet big. Just, you know, thinking back about it. But this thing is that big and it's hovering outside my driver window. And I'm doing, I'm zooming down the interstate, you know, pull out as fast as the truck governor will take me, a little, probably 72 miles an hour. And there it was, just keeping up with me. And it was glowing bright and then a little dimmer and a bright and a little dimmer and a bright and a little dimmer and I just thought that was really weird and and then my truck dies and as I'm you know was paying attention to the orb because it was so weird this thing you know coming following me down the interstate right outside the daggum window and when the truck died, uh, my focus goes back to the truck. I'm, th you know, I put it in neutral. I try to restart it. It's not restarting, and so I have to pull off the road. So I'm, I pull off the interstate, put on my emergency flashers, and 
And a list of things that you have to do when you break down in a semi, you know, you put your marker splashers on, you try to get off the road as much as you can, and your next step you do is you get out and you put out your emergency triangles behind the rig, you know, 50 foot, 100 foot, 100 foot, depending on the roadway that you're on. I don't remember doing that. But the next thing I remember is that PMAC, my guy that was in the sleeper bed, my driving partner, is hollering my name. Carol Ann! Carol Ann! What are you doing, Carol Ann? And I came, I was like in a trance, and I was in front of the truck. The emergency flashers was going, the headlights were still on, and I was 50 yards probably in front of the semi walking down the side of the interstate look at the chill bumps just covering me telling you all about it y'all look at can you see these chill bumps i don't know if you can see these chill bumps on my arm but anyway i'm 50 yards in front of the truck in the in the headlights walking westward down the interstate and pmac is standing outside the truck hollering my name and, and I just was oblivious until I heard my name and it sounded a, at first like from far away my name being hollered. And then as I came back into the present, I guess, I mean I could hear him loud and clear and, and I stopped and I turned around and I'm staring at the truck sitting, you know, back 50 yards or so from me. And the headlights are blinding me and I'm and I can't really see PMAC, but I can hear him and then he comes running towards me down the side of the interstate. What the hell are you doing out here? He was hollering at me. And I'm going, I don't know. Uh, wh wh why'd you stop the truck? I had a What do you do? Oh, I don't know. All I could think all I could say was I don't know, because I was kind of confused. And uh, it was so cold, and when we were talking, the the condensation in your breath coming out of your mouth, you know, is very prevalent. And he his was, and mine was, and, and I didn't have a coat on. And then I noticed suddenly that I was very, very cold. And I he goes, come on, let's go get back in the truck. And so we turn around, and... We walk back to the truck, and I'm shivering. I'm starting to shiver real hard at that point, you know, because I was just so cold. And um, we got back in the truck, and the truck's not running, you know. The lights are still on. The emergency flashers are on. And and um, I told him, I said, we got to get the, the emergency triangles. And he goes, I'll get him. And he got out of the truck and he got the emergency triangles. And I'm just, I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I'm still, the truck's still not running and he comes back with the emergency triangles and I don't remember putting them out, but obviously I did. Um, so, um, he gets back in the truck and he goes, well, start it up and we'll get the heater going. It's, you know, freezing ass cold out there. Let, let's go, you know? And I said, well, the truck died on me. It, it's, it won't start. And he goes, well, try it again you know and so I went to crank the truck you know the truck started right up and he goes turn that heater on he put the heater up on high you know and he's you know sitting in the passenger seat at this point and he's asking me all kind of questions and all I can say is I don't know I you know I don't know and he goes are you okay and I go yeah I, I'm fine you know or you want me to drive now I said no I still got you know another 40 something minutes to drive when I looked at the clock and everything and he goes well I'm awake now I'm not going back to bed he says I'll just you know he says I'll just co-ride over here right fine you know we started and the whole time this was going on no vehicles came eastbound or westbound past us and I don't really know how long it took it took maybe we were probably on the side of the road about 45 minutes I I would estimate thinking back about it but we start driving down the road and I noticed right off that 
the cruise control wouldn't set. Um, my gauges on the dash, several of my gauges on the dash weren't working. The truck was kind of, uh, had some jerky motions when I, you know, was trying to get up to, you know, 65 plus miles an hour and a bunch of my gauges weren't working properly. And uh, so we made a note of it and PMAC sent a message in, you know, on the uh, Qualcomm to the company, to our dis dispatcher. And uh, they sent a message back, I don't know, about 20 minutes later that said, well, when you get to Cheyenne and drop your load, take the truck over to, you know, Cheyenne uh, Freightliner and it's time, you know, we'll get the truck looked at. and, and uh, so we did that, and, and uh, he took over his driving, uh, and then as the sun was coming up, you know, I, I went back and I laid in the sleeper berth, but man, there was no going to sleep for me. My mind was 90 to nothing. There was no way I was going to be able to go to sleep. And so I was still awake when we delivered our load, and um, then we drove over to Freightliner of Cheyenne and talked to uh, a technician there and turned the truck in and, and the technician looked at our records on the truck and he said well your truck is you know in need of a a um, tune-up and and uh, preventive maintenance and so uh, we contacted you know the company and the dispatcher and they said yeah go ahead and get all that done you know and so they ended up having to get us a hotel room down in Cheyenne and so we got a hotel room and um, we ended up, were there a couple of days um, because they had to order a bunch of parts for the truck. A bunch of the sensors on the truck had all of a sudden gone bad. And I, when we went to pick the truck up, I talked to the technician that worked on our truck and I said, well, tell me something. I said, um, you know, what would cause that many sensors to go bad at one time? And he said, I don't know, that's real unusual. We haven't had that happen before. And um, I never did tell PMAC about the orange orb that came up that I passed that, that was flying beside the wind because I didn't want him to think I was, you know, losing my marbles. But uh, it did happen. And it caused, obviously, riding outside our truck or whatever, I don't know, caused my truck to die, caused all kind of sensors to uh, be overloaded to where they, you know, became non-functional. And um, right now where I live here in this beautiful area here, this is, uh, you can see Maxwell and Zeus's graves back here. Uh, behind me, this is my grapevine right back here. I did my last video sitting here. It was pretty airy. The sun's going down to the west that way. But um, a man that I let work on my car and stuff lives, I don't know, three quarters of an acre that way. He's got a big acreage area like I've got. And he, down in Grand Bay, down there, has a um, automotive shop. And I asked him, I, you know, I said, um, you're familiar with sensors and stuff on vehicles and trucks and what have you. And he goes, yeah. And I asked him what would cause, you know, something like that many sensors at one time to, you know, go bad. And he said, well, a surge of some kind he said would cause something like that and he said and but no more than likely he said uh, if a surge like that happened more than likely the brain of your your vehicle would have also had some kind of a problem seemingly um, but um, we picked the truck up and headed on down the road and picked up another load somewhere and ended up going down 25 I think down into uh, Colorado and um, but that that was a very unusual uh, occurrence for me and I wrote this story into um, David Politis channel when he first started reading letters it's been I know over a year ago maybe going on two years ago or so 
but I wrote this all up and I, I sent this uh, email to David Politis and he read my story on his channel and what caused me to write the story into him is because he told an incident of a man who um, a truck driver who they found his truck sitting half on the road and half off the road um, somewhere off of I-5 in California and the truck driver was not found and uh, I don't remember how long he said afterwards not too long afterwards they found this man floating dead the truck driver that of the abandoned truck they found him floating dead in a pond or a body of water not too far from where you know he obviously stopped stopped the truck and got out of the truck and walked away or was taken away or or whatever but it, it makes me you know the more I think back about it I mean I don't remember getting out and putting out my emergency triangles but they were but I did and I don't remember anything in my mind you know telling me let's just start walking down the road you know in the cold without a coat on you know or whatever but I but that's what I was doing and when he told the story about that other truck driver they found it I, it made me wonder would I have if PMAC hadn't have been sleeping in the sleeper berth and because he told me as we sat and talked as I, as I we started driving again I said he said you know the the motion of the truck not moving you know woke him up and the silence of you know the truck not speeding down the road or whatever woke him up and when he got to looking for me and couldn't find me and he looks out the front you know windshield of the truck and the lights are on the truck's not running the emergency flashers are on he sees me just walking headed eastbound down the interstate no other traffic no you know it was a beautiful night if you looked up you could see every star in the sky you know because there, there you know there was just it was just a beautiful cold night but it just makes me wonder had he not woke up and started hollering my name and brought me out of whatever trance I seemed to have been in at the time, what would have happened to me? And, and that's just, you know, another way that I think the good Lord has taken care of me in my life. And I just wanted to tell you all this story because it's a true story and it really happened. And, um, Oliver, I think, settle down a little bit. He's out. Come here, Oliver. Come here, baby. You want, you want to say hello to everybody? He's he's a little hot. He likes, he's been in and out of the house several times since since I've been talking to y'all. But He's growing, growing, growing. He's my growing boy. Yep, and this is a one of our Ollie observations. Yeah. Yeah, baby. He's a good boy. We've been doing our obedience training, and he is really coming along with it he's been house trained for probably at least a good month and um, he's a really good boy so I do I miss I miss so badly my my other boys you know so um thank y'all for watching my video please give me a thumbs up and um, I'll be back with another uh, video soon. Thank you and God bless.